Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another part to my horror novella vlogs <laughs> that I've been doing. Last month I did one of these and I said there would be another part to it. This is it. Today I'm reading seven horror novellas and I asked you guys on Instagram, I'm like, do you want me to read all seven? Do you want me to split it up? And like 72% of you said to read all of them. So since you wanted to torture me, I read seven novellas in five days and uh, reviewed them for you. So the novellas that I read, they're all kind of different types of horror. There's some regular horror, there's some extreme horror, and I'll explain the um, synopsis to you as we go throughout this video because I don't want to make this intro super long and because uh, I'm reading seven books. So the books that I'm reading are Scan Lines by Todd Kiesling, Three Days in the Pink Tower by Ev Knight, we Can Never Leave This Place by Eric LaRocca. I'm also reading Against the Lockers by Aiden Mezer, Chainsaw Hooker by Judith Sonnet, Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess, and Womb by Duncan Ralston. So if you want to see my full thoughts and reviews of any of these books, just keep watching. Okay, please excuse my appearance. I am filming this while I have um, it's actually August 1st. I pre-film all my videos. You're probably not going to see this till the end of August, so I'm sorry, but um, yeah, I have two jobs, so I try to like pre-film whenever I can, so that way I'm consistent, but um, yeah, I feel like shit. I called off work today because I'm actually, I work from my dad's house right now because, you know, with moving... I wanted to make sure that this office was like set up before I moved my work stuff over, but now I got COVID. So I don't want to go over there and infect my dad. So um, I called off today and like, this is the the fourth day that I've been sick and this is probably like the worst that I've felt like, I, cause it's now in my chest, like it kind of like hurts to breathe and stuff. So yeah, I'm you know, I called off, I just plan on reading like all day and chilling. So, you know, I asked you guys on Instagram if you want me to break this video up, if you want me to read seven novellas, you want me to read seven novellas and torture me. So I can't decide what I want to read first. Um, I think I might read scan lines first. Uh, it's about 110 pages. Um, I think I'm just going to start with this one. Okay, so immediately... I think this book is going to be about suicide because there is a note in the beginning of the book um, about, you know, if you feel suicidal, here's the number for the suicide hotline. And uh, it's just like a very heartfelt note. So it's about 12.15. I'm going to go make some lunch. I got these little like cauliflower thins from Whole Foods. I had to order groceries this week. Um, but they're like these everything bagel cauliflower like gluten-free things. They are delicious. So I'm going to toast them in the air fryer with some avocado. Um, of course, you know, when you order your groceries, they give you like rotting produce. <laughs> so I have avocados that are going bad so anyways got halfway through scan lines a little more than halfway I'm on page 72 really liking this so far it's about um these teenage boys and the, my computer is literally broken it's about these um teenage boys and they're hanging out and they decide to like download this porn and when they get the download and watch the video they realize it's not porn it's a man shooting himself in the head and killing himself so now um after they watched this video all of them are having these like 
weird hallucinations of this man like they think they're seeing him everywhere they're seeing like their parents with his face like and it's haunting them they can't sleep at night and now one by one they're starting to commit suicide so it's very dark um but very well done so far i'm very intrigued to see where this goes so i'm gonna go eat lunch and finish this up and uh i'll get back to you deeply apologize for my appearance this is what I get every time I film a vlog I'm always sick and like dying um anyways I finished scan lines I enjoyed it I'm gonna go with like a four star um it was pretty good it was just a little bit like I wanted more I was like when is something else gonna happen and it just kind of ended and um I, I don't know it's one of those situations where I wish this was a little bit longer actually but um I think it was really well done and it kind of left me thinking like mm, okay well what was the point and then um Todd Kiesling wrote a little afterward in here and he goes on to say it's like loosely based off of his life and um, he did see someone commit suicide on video on accident before <laughs> um so he was saying how like this book is more so about dealing with anxiety and depression which i totally see and totally get and um he said you know uh, let me find it um a ghost story but not the conventional sort um, he's less of a ghost than he is the force of depression. He's the grim face you see projected on everyone else, the same face you see in the mirror every day, the one that tells you there's no point, you aren't worth it, you don't deserve it, and why not end it already? He's the liar in your head and you're the suit he wears. Um, how easily one can slip from depression to suicide if they aren't careful. How easily the emptiness inside can consume you if you listen to its lies. So um, yeah, very dark, very interesting take on depression and I recommend. Um, I am probably going to break out my Kindle and read Against the Lockers next because I think it's only like 70 some pages so I can probably whip that out in one sitting and then just kind of come back here and share my final review of that. Okay so I just finished Against the Lockers by Aiden Messer. Hopefully I'm pronouncing their name correctly, but I just finished it on Kindle. It's actually only like 45 pages or something. I think I said 70 something. So it's a lot shorter than I thought. It's more like a short story. Um, but we're following this um, gay couple, but they're in college. They're in like art classes. And um, there's this bully named Timothy that's like constantly bullying them and um one day rapes our main character so it is an extreme horror short story about revenge um and the things that they do to get revenge on this bully and you know it's extreme horror it's vile disgusting <laughs> gory um graphic depictions about rape uh, you know violence torture and um yeah i enjoyed it <laughs> i guess i always say that about extreme horror it's like i guess i enjoyed it <laughs> um i think it was well done i liked the story i liked our characters my only complaint is i just wish that it was longer if it was like you know at least like 150 200 pages i wanted to like learn more about these characters in depth so you know it's just like a little short story you're not really getting depth with these characters which i love character development so that's my only complaint um 
I think if you're just looking for like a fun little extreme horror short story, um, definitely check it out. Um, they are a indie horror author. I think this is their second book if I'm not mistaken. Aiden, correct me if I'm wrong. I became familiar with them from Instagram. Like we both follow each other on Instagram. And so I saw their posts and I saw um, Judith Sonnet post about them. And she also wrote the foreword in this book. So um, obviously had to check it out. Glad I did. I'm definitely interested in checking out their first book now. Um, but yeah, if you're just looking for a fun little short extreme horror, look no further. I also love revenge tropes. If you do too, look no further. Yeah, I don't know. I might start something tomorrow and talk to you then. my god I cannot believe how perfect my bathroom turned out to be it's this cute little boho themed bathroom look at this I did all this today and it's just like perfection like look at this I am obsessed I'm gonna live in my bathroom for the rest of my life <laughs> so it's now at nighttime I'm in my pajamas don't judge me um, I ended up starting Cirque Berserk. So I got 50% in. Um, and this is basically like your average teen slasher. And basically it takes place in this amusement park. And it's like a little YA. I don't know if this is supposed to be YA or if it's actually YA, but it's about like teenagers. And... <clears throat> A group of them it's like their senior year in high school and they one night decide let's go to this abandoned amusement park because they hear that it's haunted and I guess the rumor is that like 30 years prior a group of teenagers um, actually ended up murdering a bunch of people at this amusement park and then killed themselves and everything was this huge bloodbath and the amusement park has been shut down ever since so they were like oh it's just rumors it's just an urban legend blah 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 so now they go to the amusement park and it's a slasher <laughs> so um i won't give anything else away there was like this big twist that happened around like the 30 percent mark somewhere around there 30 40 percent somewhere and um I was like what I was like that does not make sense there's like a plot hole here and now they're starting to explain it which I appreciate um, each chapter is a different point of view and you're also getting chapters from the villains themselves from the murderers and you're also getting like flashback chapters of you know what happened in the 80s when this bloodbath happened and um I don't know I really like it so far I think it's super interesting so yeah I will update you when I'm finished and let you know my final rating okay hello it's the next day I'm here at work <laughs> um so I just finished Cirque Berserk. I apologize for the quality filming on my phone right now. Also apologize for my quality in general because my camera is fucked. Um, I have like a really ancient Canon camera. And so the autofocus goes in and out, in and out. And now that like my normal filming setup is in front of books. My camera is constantly trying to focus on the books and not me. And I've tried like a million different settings, no matter what I do, it's just fucked. And like I've Googled it and everyone says like the camera is just like 10 years old. And so the autofocus sucks anyways. um, So that's why I'm like trying out different autofocus features in this video. So if you see the camera, <laughs> <laughs> going like this this whole vlog that's why um but yeah I just finished Cirque Berserk and it was fun it was very very YA like it read like YA like a typical YA slasher 
and um there are some like fun elements in it and like I said you know you get the point of view from like the victims or not the victim the villains and um it was fun uh it did get a little bit ridiculous like it was just kind of off the wall ridiculous, but I had a fun time. It was just like a fun novella. I feel like if this would have been a full length novel, I would have been like bashing my head against the wall because personally, I don't really like YA. So, um, and yeah, I had no idea that this was YA actually. Um, but I think I'm going to go with three stars, maybe like a, eh, three stars probably. Um, it was fun. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I think if you're looking for just like a fun summery slasher to like end the summer, this would be a good one. Um, it wasn't anything spectacular, but I had a fun time. I don't know how many times I just repeated myself. Probably a lot. I also just finished Clown in the Cornfield today, which made me want to um, actually bash my head into a wall because that's an example of like a YA slasher that would have been so much better as a novella because there was just so much YA and then so many political things in there. Like it just, it didn't have to get as political as it did and it just pissed me off. That I feel like would have been better as a novella. So the fact that I read this that was similar to that, but as a novella, I actually liked Cirque Berserk even more than Clown in a Cornfield. But yeah. like oh I'm gonna put my hair in braids and have like beachy waves in the morning <laughs> does this look like beachy waves to you my hair like doesn't do anything ever so last night I started chainsaw hooker by Judith Sonnet and I got 50% in on my phone um, before bed I read extreme horror in order to sleep just kidding I couldn't sleep last night I kept fluctuating between cold and hot cold and hot and then I couldn't sleep and I still feel sick like not even sick like I feel weird like just weird things going on anyways chainsaw hooker this is about this woman RJ who is um a prostitute and she is constantly like we get a lot of um kind of backstory at her job as a sex worker and how like people treat her and like the the crazy shit that they do to this poor woman and like there was a scene involving shit ugh, ugh. this group of people kind of abduct her and i don't want to give too much away but like craziness ensues and uh, she's gifted a chainsaw to get revenge on people. It's kind of, you know, what you expect, but there are so many elements in this that I was not expecting because I went into this one blind. There is uh, Satan, um, tentacles, <laughs> zombies, heaven, God, hell. <laughs> There's like so many crazy things going on and like, I was not expecting any of that. I was expecting this to be like just a straightforward slasher. No, this is so weird in the best way. <laughs> so yeah, I'm at the 50% mark. I'm gonna finish it today, let you know how I like it. So far I'm loving it. It's very interesting. And I just love how her books are like extreme horror. There's tons of like gore and graphic Ness. and um still there's like a storyline that we're following it's not just here's someone and here's someone brutally torturing them for the entire book like that's most extreme horror and i don't like it i i love extreme horror like this when there is a plot and a storyline that we're following and it's not just like here's someone torturing someone no that's not my thing so yeah i'll talk to you later i have to go to work okay so I'm filming on my phone again. I really don't have 
the mental capacity <laughs> to deal with my camera. Two things. First of all, I have this theory because I never tested positive for COVID. I'm like, do I even have it? I don't know. I feel sick like all day. I'm having trouble breathing. Like it hurts to breathe and like I have symptoms, but all my tests are constantly negative. And I'm like, well, either the home tests just don't work or I don't actually have it. So now I'm like, of course, on like an anxiety induced Googling spree. And there are all these, you know, articles and I know like my friends from work, a lot of them tested positive and their spouse never got it. So I'm like, just because Justin has it doesn't mean that I do technically. So I'm looking into this and, you know, it is a possibility that my immune system is just on overdrive. Um, it's just very possible that my immune system is down trying to fight off the infection and I don't actually have it. And these symptoms are from my immune system going crazy. That's That might be it. But now I'm like worried because I'm like, what if I don't have it and I end up getting it any day now and I have to call off work again? <laughs> I already told work that I was positive because I just assumed you know what happens when you assume you make an ass out of you and me yeah i'm just like Ugh, my anxiety is so bad but i need to stop because that's gonna lower my immune system <laughs> oh dear god anyways yeah i it like hurts <sighs> like i'm breathing but it hurts like my chest hurts um anyways back to why we're all here books I finished Chainsaw Hooker today and okay this book is so fucking weird but I really liked it I gave it four stars um it, I was not expecting it because it was so bizarre I was expecting just like a straightforward slasher and like I said there's demons there's zombies there's tentacles there's monsters it's like heaven versus hell there's angels there are vagina beast like vaginal beasts <laughs> it's really out there still gory still disgusting i liked it um yeah not as like graphic and disturbing as her other books i only ever read um for the sake of and clown hunt i need to read for the sake of two this month this might be like a very extreme horror month for me um but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I had a fun time. Um, whenever I'm having my like fits of insomnia at night, I'm just going to think of the uh, vagina goblins <laughs> or whatever they are, vagina beasts. <laughs> um, I just took a bath and while I was in the bathtub, I started the audiobook for Womb. So imagine me, I'm just I mean, don't imagine me in the bathtub. That's weird. But just like imagine me sitting in the bathtub with my audiobook for Womb playing in the background. <laughs> so yeah, I started that. And um, so far, I mean, I haven't gotten to anything super disgusting. Like tons of you guys messaged me on Instagram telling me that it's really disgusting. I'm intrigued. So basically so far we're following this guy angel and he like invites this sex worker over and he's telling her a story so they're sitting in the room that um his mom passed away in and there's a picture of like moby dick on the wall and now he's just like telling us this little story I haven't gotten into anything super graphic yet i'll let you know when i get there and then um I'm gonna read these other two books. I have the Eric LaRocca and um, Three Days in the Pink Tower. I think I'm gonna start physically reading Three Days in the Pink Tower tonight um, because that one I hear is just like sad. It's just, it's based off of a true story and uh, I'll let you know when I start reading it. But um, that one I hear is just more like 
sad. My book of the month came. I'm so excited for this month because book of the month has been a dud almost every month for me this year. And this month it was a banger. So I got three books. Obviously the new Alice Feeney. I'm obsessed with Alice Feeney. She can do no wrong. I mean, except for that one book with the weird ending, but even that one wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, the new Karen Slaughter. I'm nervous about this one because it's a follow-up to Pieces of Her, which I did not really like. So I don't know. We'll see. And then obviously the new Lisa Jewell, which is the follow-up to The Family Upstairs. I'm obsessed with Lisa Jewell. So I'm super excited to get to that one. So yeah, what a banger this month. Okay, book okay, of the good month. Morning. It is the next morning and I just jinx. Uh, I just finished Womb and honestly you guys I don't think it was as disgusting as everyone else says. Is it disgusting for like the average person? Yes. Is it disgusting for someone that reads extreme horror? A little bit. Um, I didn't think that it was too bad honestly but that's me. Most people watching this video you will find it disgusting. <laughs> but um, we're basically following this guy, Angel, who checks into the Lonely Motel and he hires a sex worker to come over and he's just telling her stories. So um, each chapter is like a different story that they're kind of, she starts telling stories. So they're telling stories back and forth and some of them are disgusting. Some of them are just plain sad and some are just disturbing and um they're sharing these stories and you can tell there's an overall theme now i don't really want to say what it is because it completely spoils the book and someone spoiled it for me because someone was like oh this is about a man who blank and um i knew exactly what was going to happen in the end so it's best to go in not really knowing anything um there is an overall theme and you can tell by each story what the theme is you can tell by the title like yeah, you know what the theme is if you pay close attention you kind of know what's gonna happen but um i would honestly classify this more as like psychological horror although there are some you know disturbing factors definitely um it was more like psychological extreme horror in a sense that like I feel like this book could have been dissected in a psychology course <laughs> if it wasn't so disgusting so yeah um I think I'm gonna go with like four stars it was pretty good um I feel like I would have liked it more if someone didn't spoil it for me so I'm gonna go with four stars and then I started three days in the pink tower. Um, I got to page like 35. Um, there are 135 pages or 140 pages actually. Um, so I didn't get that far into it. Um, I started it last night and this is a based on a true story. So the author's note in the beginning this author, Eve, Ev, Eve, Evie Knight, um, she put a little note in the beginning that when she was 17, she was, um, I guess she answered the door and was held at gunpoint and raped. And um, this book is loosely based off of a uh, not even loosely based because she actually said that a lot of the direct quotes in this book she said in real life so i guess this is based off of um what happened to her so this is kind of her coping mechanism and how she dealt with the trauma that happened to her when she was younger so this is just I can already tell this is just going to be sad and I don't even know if this is going to be something that I'm going to give a rating um, because 
when when it's stuff like that it's like not my place to be like oh this book based off of your life experience I'm gonna rate three stars <laughs> like no 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 um but we'll see I mean it's fiction so far we're following this girl who goes to a um carnival carnival fair I don't know um and she's hanging out with her friends ends up finding her way into this psychic's tent <laughs> and she starts like reading her tarot cards and the girl's like I have no idea what any of this means but all these cards look bad <laughs> on the back of the book it does say that um men show up at her front door kidnap her at gunpoint so it's like literally exactly what happened to this poor author um and she's brought to a pink cabin in the woods where she's held prisoner so it says um in her darkest moment the fortune teller appears and gives her a deck of tarot cards which she must cast and interpret in a fight for her life babies i'm getting ready to go to my therapy job with my wild lion hair you know what i think it is i've been using this like completely natural plant-based shampoo and like it's not washing my hair like i wash my hair and it's like so <laughs> greasy feeling and like weighed down i'm like did i even wash my hair and like usually i go like one to two days without washing it and I've been having to wash it every day because that shampoo sucks. So I need to find a different shampoo because, and then it's like so greasy that like I try to do something with it and it doesn't want to do anything. Anyways, um, I put my hair up at work anyways, but um, I finished three days in the pink tower and um, this was a difficult read but it was well done and I highly recommend. Um, I'm not going to give this a rating, like I said, because a hundred pages of this book is like about this girl being sexually assaulted. And um, I can tell this was like heavily, heavily based off of real life. So I don't want to give this a rating. I don't want to be like, oh, this is four stars. Like, and it's literally about the author being sexually assaulted and this was you know probably very healing for her to just get it all out and turn this into such a positive story um so i feel weird rating it like it, it just doesn't make sense like oh your your experience with this trauma is only four stars like no I, it's weird um i feel like rating books is weird anyways because we all just kind of pull a rating out of our ass but that's a topic for another day <laughs> um i highly recommend this one um the ending i wouldn't really classify this as horror it says in the back it is speculative auto fiction it's horror on Goodreads. I would say, I mean, it is kind of horror because it's like real life shit, like real life horror that happens to people. It's fucked up. Um, but I would say this is more like, it's like realistic and then it kind of blurs the lines into speculative autofiction. And it's almost like a fantasy ending. I will say, what happens at the end? Like, <laughs> how she gets out. I mean, that's not a spoiler. It literally says in the back, she gets out. Um, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> it was wild. Um, yeah, I recommend. I've never seen a book um, involving tarot cards before, so that was really interesting. Uh, if you like tarot cards, definitely check this one out. I've never seen anything like it. And it was a good time. I mean, it wasn't a good time, but it was a good book. And then I got halfway through We Can Never Leave This Place by Eric LaRocca. This one's a weird one. I'm liking it so far, but um, it's like a folklore fantasy horror, I guess. I don't even know if this is horror, but um, I guess there are some horror elements in it. But we're following this girl. And her mom and I think she's 
turning 16 and they're in this like dystopian kind of world it's like a war zone going on and um her dad gets shot and killed and her mom <laughs> is being really weird about the whole thing she wants to like keep his body in the house and she's dressing him up and he's just like chilling on the bed and he's dead <laughs> and the daughter's like the fuck and now this spider shows up and he's talking to them <laughs> it's a weird it's a weird time um yeah kind of one of those situations where you're not sure like is this real is this not real because the mom has hinted that the daughter is a storyteller multiple times so we'll see where this goes okay um, so i finished we can never leave this place guys i'm giving this two stars <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I hate to say it. I feel like Eric LaRocca is an author where like I want to love his book so bad and I try so hard. And um, you know, his covers are like stunning, gorgeous. And then the writing, I feel like it's so pretentious. It's so like, oh, you just don't get it. I'm not like the other girls. <laughs> like that's what I feel like his books are. I don't know I start off loving them and then as the book goes on I just get more and more confused and I don't get it like I don't get the hype this one I know is his least popular book and I can see why it was very like I liked it the at the you know 50% mark and then it just they go so off the wall like weird and not in a good way I don't know there were like plot holes I feel like because he would mention if you know what I mean like if you read this book you'll know what I mean there's this scene that has to do with a photograph and I feel like it was just thrown in there and I was waiting for something to develop on that story and it never happened it was just unexplained and it was almost like a plot hole like I feel like he purposely puts plot holes in his books to make them like ambiguous but then they just end up being like plot holes that don't make sense and I'm like were we supposed to gather information from that were we supposed to take something away from that scene because I don't get it and um yeah I I don't know I feel like people are gonna be offended by the way that I feel about him and his books but I just I don't get it Will I continue to buy all his books and read them? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, he's a good writer. There's nothing, you know, wrong with his writing, I guess. It's just that it's not for me. But I still, I don't know why I'm so intrigued to like pick up all his books and read them. Probably because they're stunning. <laughs> I almost feel like if there were more like character development and like I feel like instead of developing his characters and like making you care about these people he focuses on like overly embellishing his writing and it just I don't know anyways thank you so much for watching this video and um, I guess I'll see you in the next one bye